All right, welcome to uh, Mental Junk Food, and this is CB Smallwood, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Rob Liefeld and Netflix. Uh, two things that I think many people never really expected to hear, but here it is. It's reality. This is happening. This is not some bizarre else world. This isn't a, like a Marvel issue of what if. This is this is real. <laughs> it's uh, it kind of came unexpectedly, you know, sort of just out of the blue. But anyway, having said that, let's let's talk about the nitty gritty of what this is, what it means, and, and all that good stuff. So, uh, basically, according to uh, Bleeding Cool, Netflix is investing further in cult book fair with a seven-figure rights deal for Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld's extreme universe of characters. Now, Akiva Goldsman of the Ology series of Transformer spinoffs will be tasked with creating and overseeing a writer's room to generate a shared universe of films connected by Liefeld's creations. Goldsman, Liefeld will uh, produce with uh, Brooklyn Weaver and Weed Rhodes as well as uh, Greg Lessons will serve as executive producer. Now here's a quote from uh, Rob Liefeld himself and I quote, Netflix has become part of the everyday existence for me and my children. Their programming is the most dynamic and diverse I have ever seen. <laughs> and I'm beyond thrilled and inspired to be bringing my extreme catalog to life with the creative wizards at Netflix. With uh, Akiva Goldsman has achieved with his uh, craft of storytelling across all mediums in our industry is of absolute benefit for my extreme characters. He is the absolute comic book fanatic, and working with him on adapting Extreme Universe has been electric. His stellar work on Star Trek Discovery has wowed the fandom, and trust me when I say that the Teen Titans show he is producing, the Teen Titans show he is producing, sorry, is going to blow fans away. I cannot wait to show the world what we have in store, unquote. And uh, just one quick little snippet before we actually kind of analyze this a little further. Liefeld's Extreme Universal Deal covers six comic books and more than 50 characters, which include Brigade, Bloodstrike, uh, Cybrid, uh, Rejects, Blood Wolf, and Kaboom. I think it's, uh, now, that, that's pretty much the end of the quotes, but the thing that I find very interesting, uh, first and foremost is there is one particular uh, name that's missing here. And, uh, you know, Rob Liefeld is synonymous with uh, Deadpool, with Cable, X-Force, and Young Blood. Uh, that was like the first creator th creator-owned thing that he developed in Image Comics was Young Blood. And... Uh, it's interesting that it's not included with this uh, Netflix deal. Now, if we uh, look over at a article by HollywoodReporter.com, you know, doing a quick Google search, you know, I remember reading uh, some time back that there was a Young Blood movie in development, and uh, it's not going to be part of uh, again, you know, Young Blood won't be part of the Netflix deal. And the reason is, it's been in development as a movie for some years, years now. And its rights are held elsewhere. So, there is a movie studio somewhere that owns the rights, of the movie rights, to Young Blood. So, that prevents Netflix from doing anything Young Blood related. So, that's uh, kind of interesting. But having said that, I don't, I don't take that as a big loss as far as the Netflix deal goes. Uh, because uh, Brigade is an interesting book. Bloodstrike, Cybrid, Rejects, Blood Wolf, and Kaboom. A lot of Extreme Studios' uh, early books way back in the day, and, and I don't I don't say this to be malicious or, or to be mean or anything like that. They, they were just straight up, there's the bad guy, let's beat him up, end of story. You know, if you're expecting, like, the type of death, depth in character development or story pacing or, or, or just, just, just interesting things thrown in uh, in a way that a Chris Claremont or Alan Moore or or uh, something a little bit more cheeky and interesting like uh, Garth Ennis, I, I don't know. Uh, you, you're, you're not going to get that with a lot of the 
uh, old school extreme books. Now, in recent years, they really uh, brought in some really good team of writers and, and artists to really uh, take a different spin on all these books. And I recommend that you check them out. You know, a lot, a lot of people seem to be enjoying uh, with the new takes on like characters like Prophet and Glory. Some people's enjoying the uh, the new Young Blood series that's come out. As far as like Brigade, uh, Rob Liefeld did a Kickstarter for Brigade, and I've not seen it yet. I have to look to see if if it ever actually made print. But uh, you know, that's something that he's been you know working on for a while. So. You know, maybe you can let me know in the comments below if, if that ever come to light or if it's just kind of like, you know, still sitting on his art desk. Anyway, with the uh, Young Blood discussion out of the way, let's talk about the actual um, books: uh, Brigade, Blood Strike, Cyber, Rejects, uh, Blue Wolf, and Kaboom, and the and the fifty plus characters that are going to be featured in this shared universe on Netflix. Now, why would Netflix do this? Now, first of all, it reminds me of this uh, South Park skit where they, they make fun of Netflix for basically anybody can pitch any type of idea and Netflix will, will buy it, you know? And this kind of puts me in mind to that. And, that, and I mean no insult to Rob Liefeld or, or any, anybody like that, you know, uh, or anybody at all. But it, 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 I do kind of find it a little bit funny, you know, because this, this kind of came out of the blue. And, and I'm glad that this is happening, you know, and I'm curious how it all unfolds, but, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Brigade, Blood Strike, Cyber, Rejects, Blood Wolf, and Kaboom. So, uh, I like the idea that it's going to be a shared universe, and, of course, uh, unless I misread it, unless I've done poor research, which is possible, all this stuff appears to be live action. So we're going to probably get live action uh, movies out of this featured on Netflix. And really, I'm, I'm very impressed with a lot of the movies that Netflix has been uh, churning out, you know. And I'm not talking about the ones that they've necessarily acquired. So they're really stepping up to be a contender in the world of film, I believe, in my opinion. So um, one final thought before we sign off here. Uh, there's there's uh, something that hasn't been discussed yet, or maybe maybe people are talking about it in undertones. But when does the superhero bubble burst? I mean, think about it. Since you know Marvel has you know Marvel Studios and and, Mar and all the different Marvel characters, where whether you know you got Fox or just whatever other, uh, I guess Sony, whatever studios that are using Marvel characters and making Marvel movies. It's like there's been this craze to create shared universes now. You know, uh, there's the uh, failed, uh, which, you know, I don't think they did that bad. Uh, Universal Monsters, the Dark Universe, they tried to do a shared universe thing, and it, it never took off because, you know, I think it's just a case of too much too soon. They didn't let it happen organically. And I'm not going to get into the whole uh, Curse of the Mummy or the Mummy, you know, movie. You know, I'm not going to get into the, the whole story of it. But and then you got poor DC. You know, DC does really good with their standalone, you know, movies, in my opinion. I mean, I, I, I liked all three of the uh, newer Batman movies, with the, with the exception of the last one. I thought it could be tweaked to make it a little bit better. And then, even though I disagreed with some of the things in it, uh, as far as, like, the character itself, you know, I thought I didn't think it was a true-to-character portrayal of Superman, but the... Uh, but the Superman movie, you know, last one they came up with, I did enjoy it, you know. Just didn't disagree. I, you know, to me, Christopher Reeves, that portrayal of Superman, that's that's my Superman. But, you know, to each their own, right? But but there's, like, numerous examples of, 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 I feel like, in my opinion, of DC doing standalone movies that do really good. But since they tried to replicate uh, a shared universe in their films, it, it's just, I feel like it's just been a, it been abysmal for them, and it just it hasn't really played off right, in my opinion. You know, moving on from that, you got all these other uh, movie studios that are wanting to get into uh, not just shared universes, but they, you know they're wanting to make like well, yeah, shared universes. They just want to make like all these different movies about these different brands, you know, and do spinoffs upon spinoffs. I mean, Star Wars is doing that, and uh, and I, I'm afraid they're going to milk that uh, that poor cow. To dust, you know, if they're not careful, and it's already, you know, in my humble opinion, starting to show signs of it. 
so there's all these people wanting to make movie franchises out of, out of different properties, and, and there's just it's like a gold rush, you know. Uh, I think a lot of film studios are surprised at how popular superheroes are on the big screen, and and really it shouldn't come as a surprise because technology has finally caught up with the comic book format. What comic books have been able to do for gosh, at least since the 50s, I guess. What, what they've been doing from that time all the way up now, you know, technology is finally caught up to where the excitement that's on the page can now be rendered on the big screen, you know. And people love it. And people, so far, don't seem to be getting tired of it. I think the, the only problem comes in is when you've got so much superhero stuff out there and people rushing to put superhero stuff out there, I think it's going to cause a superhero bubble and it's going to burst at some point, you know. And so there's going to be some great superhero movies that's going to come out that people's not going to watch because of uh, superhero fatigue. But that's just me. And does this Rob Liefeld Netflix deal fall into that category? I think it sort of does, but sort of don't. It sort of does in the fact that it adds to it. But it sort of don't in the fact that Netflix is kind of like its own beast. You know, it has its own audience in a way, you know. And, uh, you know, I think this is a good thing. One last thing before I, I get off here, wrap this up. I think one of the reasons that Netflix did this, acquired this property, I think they're worried about long-term their relationship with Marvel, with well, basically Disney, with Mickey Mouse. You know, because uh, Mickey Mouse is a very uh, greedy little character, you know. Uh, Disney's wanting to do, like, their own version of Netflix. And so, obviously, they're going to want all their properties to be in one place to make their streaming service, you know, more uh, valuable, you know, and to be more successful. So at some point, you know, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it's a strong possibility that, you know, Netflix sometime in the future is going to lose the rights to Daredevil, to uh, Punisher and uh, Jessica Jones and all that good stuff, you know, uh, Cage. And so they need something to kind of fill that void. And they need something that uh, will be more of a long-term deal, you know. And so I think, in my opinion, I, I think that's one of the reasons that Netflix signed off on this, you know. And also because of the, basically, a lot of the enthusiasm that's behind Deadpool and uh, now Cable. And, uh, you know, Rob Liefeld, it, it, him and his blue jeans are riding this all the way to the bank. So, <laughs> you know, more power to him, you know. And uh, I'm excited, but and I'm curious how it all unfolds. So I've kind of talked here for a bit, folks. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, please remember to subscribe and follow to be kept up to date to more. Up to date for more. Please let me know down in the comments section down below. What do you think? You know, is, is this a good idea, you know, for Netflix to do this? Do you think that uh, the extreme universe will go over well with audiences? Do you think the you know this is going to be the beginning of a superhero bu bubble that's getting ready to burst? You know, I mean, just uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Appreciate you just checking out this video, and I will catch you in the next video.